Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Uh, we are still talking about how to be a productive person in this life eh? because we are talking about the 6 P and GL of being an achiever, our framework with the first P of being having purpose and meaning in life, understanding living in the presence in terms of our own living in the now and in the flow and also having living in the divine presence the third p is positive islamic psychology the fourth p is physical wellness energy and well-being the fifth p is productivity a productive life of how we're going to develop our productivity the sixth p is how we're going to transform ourselves in terms of uh, persuasion personal development intro and inter intrapersonal communication skills and then the g is we have to lead a life of giving giving to society giving to our family giving to the world and a life filled with love love of allah love of all his creatures that allah has created and then we become the total achievers as we develop in life to become the caliph of allah on this earth so today i'm going to talk to you about the four stages eh? developing four stages of productive life planning we have to plan our life because we our life must be planned in such a way that it is will be useful for us to know which direction we are going and how we're going to develop uh, our future identity in so far as who we are and what we are going to be uh, in this life and it goes to many stages there are many many theory of uh, psychology of uh, developmental psychology in terms of stages of life we have Jean Piaget, we have Eric Erickson theory of uh, developmental psychology and so on. But I'm simplifying this from the perspective of post Islamic psychology. Let's say we are taking it from the four stages only because uh, Erickson has seven stage and Piaget has many more stages and so on. But each and every one of them has their own theory behind it. But what we want to see is from the perspective of what can we do in terms of our stages in life. So let us say take these four stages in terms of our breakdown of the four aspects of life which we will have to plan because we have to foresee this future identity of ourselves in the various level of our stages. So for post Islamic psychology, I'm proposing we have this stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Just to simplify the whole issue because each and every one of them has a different challenges in which if we can understand then we can develop a very productive way of life because we are planning for our life planning in so, in so far as stage one, what are we going to do? Stage two, what are we going to do? Stage three, stage four. All right. So when we talk about stage one, it is from birth to 12 years old. Why I take from birth to 12 years old? Because at this point, you are wholly responsible as parents. So the child will not have a future identity of that child. He is molded uh, to be the caliph of Allah all right, as uh, Sayyidina Ali Karamullah Wajir has explained, there are three stages of a childhood, uh, which he, he explained in so far as that, okay, for the first seven years, you give them a lot of love, caring, and so on. And the second seven years, you give them a lot of teaching, guidance. And then the third seven years, that means when 20, up to 14 to 21 years, the third seven years, you become their friend and guide them with knowledge, aim, and a good life, and so on. So there are three stages from birth to 21 years old as explained by Sayyidina Ali uh, so basically we can then use that as a framework so what we can say is that if we take of molding a child for example uh, there is a well-known saying among the Catholic that give me a child uh, from 0 to 7 and I will mold them to be a Catholic so basically in the Catholic system of education they mold a child from 0 to 7 and then this person will be a lifelong Catholic all right so in Islam we have to mold our children to be the Caliph of Allah the moment they are born onto this earth and infuse in their conscious and subconscious mind that they are the Caliph of Allah that means from birth to 12 years old we have to infuse in them that they have to strive to make their life good uh, to be a good person, to help others to be good and make this world good that is the only thing that you can infuse in them and you can do this through example personal example through coaching through mentoring through good deeds through cartoons there are many many ways of doing it and that need a detailed study because if you want to make 
our children to be achievers in life, we have to start then. So from 0 to 12 is very, very important. Because the, unfortunately in the Muslim world today, the 0 to 12 stage has been neglected tremendously because unfortunately a lot of our religious teachers are using violent caning, uh, uh, making the child feel small, incapable, shouting and so on, which you can see in a lot of the madrasa system, which is very, very sad. So we have to change that. We must infuse the idea of love, because finally that child must be a loving child, not a rough course uh, child that is taught in a rough course way, uh, using cane and being beaten up often. Uh, that is not a chief, uh, that is not a model of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is never a model of Islam, but somehow has infused into the whole idea that that is Islamic education, which is ridiculous. So we have to have this idea of love. That's why in our school, Khalifa Model School, we do not use the cane. We discipline them through the infusion of love, caring and sharing. So they come to our school, uh, we have our pre preschool and our primary school, and then they understand this idea of being a good person. And they understand the idea of their having uh, potentialities. Because you must infuse in them a future identity. What future identity are you giving to them? Because if you give them a negative future identity, for example, negative future identity, that means they feel small, they feel incapable, they feel that they are rotten, they, they feel that uh, you know, uh, they are stupid. So that will cause them to become uh, a very, very uh, docile, introvert, uh, passive, person and that actually you destroy the child so the first stage is to give them to remove these and give them positive values to love care sharing and infuse the idea in their conscious and subconscious mind to their very core of their existence they, they are the caliph of allah they are good allah has created all of us good allah has created us to be his khalifa to represent him on this earth allah has given us things to do on this earth huh? that we are to make ourselves good and we are to help our brothers and sisters, our friends, our family, the world, the birds, the bees to, to survive. Uh, we teach them all those values. All right? And then help to make this world good. And they would understand this. You repeat this three mantra or what we call, you call it the slogan, which we use in Khalifa school. Always strive to make yourself good. Help others to be good. Make the world good and pleasing unto Allah and unto all His goodly creatures on this earth. That's all. All right, and then you give them the future identity. This is where you have to give them oh, to be an achiever. They must see the future. What is their future? They have certain skills. Each and every one of this child will have their own inclination. Some of them maybe have an uh, inclination towards engineering. Some of them may have inclination towards arts, towards uh, history, towards uh, psychology, towards so many things in life. You are, as parents and teachers, to identify their strength. I remember my own life. I come from Islam, as I told you. I came from a very poor family. I was an orphan by the time I was 12. All right? But I remembered one thing that it never, never uh, got away from my mind. All right? Somebody threw a book, Jane's All Old Aircraft, when I was about 11 years old. They threw it out of the house. It's a thick book, all about aircraft in the world. And that become my reading every day until I become so good. And it direct me towards becoming an engineer. So all the time I was thinking how I'm going to buy, how, how I'm going to become an aircraft engineer. So I worked and I applied. When I finished my secondary school, I applied Qantas. At that time, they are recruiting apprentice engineers. So I applied. Uh, there are so many participants. The last six participants I was selected, but they only choose five. So I was the one that was knocked out. But it doesn't dampen my, my, my enthusiasm. I went for another that time. They have the Malaysia Singapore Airline. They are recruiting all these aircraft engineers. So I went again, shortlisted, finally didn't make it. But that doesn't dampen my, my interest in engineering. And then I joined the armed forces. I went for the diploma program. And my whole idea is to become a rocket engineer. All right? But circumstances doesn't allow me to be. But I became an industrial engineer. In the end, I work. Uh, in the field of productivity, with multinationals all over the world, and so on. So that is the idea infused started with one little incident in life. 
So you got to identify this one little identity, uh, one little incident in the life of that child. What is he is going to trigger his interest, his love, and his desire? Because I remember every night I'll sleep with that James Allworth aircraft book, and every day I'll go through all the various design of all the various uh, planes of those era, 1956. All right, the Sukhoi, the Mix, uh, the, the Agassiz, and so many of those planes, and I can literally know every single plane in that book because of that interest. Remember, uh, imagine a child of only 11 years old now picking up aeronautical engineering skills that may be far beyond my age. Why? It's just that I found a book that some, some rich people has thrown away, and it became my reading uh, to be to inspire me to become an engineer and to be successful in life based on one little incident. And you, as parents and as teachers, see what is your child's future identity. That means from here you must see, the moment you give birth to that child, what would be his future? This future identity is very important because you have to mold them towards that direction. You just cannot say, okay, let it go, whatever be, maybe, okay, Sarah, Sarah. No. You have, if it's something good, they have a skill in engineering. You nurture the skill in engineering. They have a skill in mathematics. You nurture the skill in mathematics. They have uh, the skill in poetry. You nurture the skill in poetry. They have uh, skills in, uh, for example, uh, being very, very EQ, very high in EQ. You nurture them to become uh, psychologists or whatever that is the thing that you see the child has a forte, a strength, a capability that can be molded so that they become a productive Khalifa of Allah. So this stage one is the most crucial stage in the life of being a Khalifa of Allah on this earth. And fortunately, unfortunately, that is dependent on both the father, the mother, the grandparents, the, children, uh, the teachers to bring the best of their child to give them the sense of purpose and meaning and a future identity. Future identity, yeah? This future identity that is glorious, huh? that give them satisfaction because they may change their future identity from here to here to here to here. There may be different stages. I second to you how I myself mop from the different ideals in life as I go through this stage, I am trying to explain to you from this storytelling, maybe it will then inspire you to know that you also have taken various twists and turns in life at stage 2, at stage 3 and at stage 4. And each and every one of them has a purpose and meaning. Allah has created you not in vain. Allah has not created you not without purpose and meaning. Allah has given you the purpose and the meaning and you have to recreate or strive towards a positive future identity at every stage of your life. Inshallah, uh, in the next video, I'll explain to you the second part of it. But remember, the first part is always from birth to 12 years old. What can you do positively to infuse in the conscious and subconscious minds of every single Muslim child? They have the confidence, they have the feeling, yes, I am a Caliph of Allah on this earth, inshallah. Allah has ordained upon me to strive to make myself good uh, in terms of character, in terms of giving, in terms of love, in terms of achievement, in terms of knowledge, in terms of all the qualities that will make me happy. Allah also has given me the ability to help others to be good. And Allah has given me also to help to make this world good and pleasing for Allah and for all His goodly creatures, inshallah.